just smashed everything in his path. Like the, you know, the parks were so good. And I don't remember who he moved out with, but I feel like there was 40 people that moved out with him. You know, the time Danny started doing well, there was this sticker in Vermont that says, don't Jersey Vermont. And then Danny, I can't remember what it was, it's like, Danny Jersey's Vermont or I Jersey Vermont he put on his board or something funny like that. I think it was the year 2000. Danny showed up on the scene at a Grand Prix that was at uh, Breckenridge, Colorado and decided to start doing air to fakies about 15 feet high. And that's I think when everyone really began to start to pay attention to this kid. Well, all of a sudden like holy crap this kid's about to rewrite not only in progression in the half pipe but also in like snowboard attitude. As long as you were down with partying, as long as you were down with snowboarding, a grenade was very accepting of, of everybody. Yeah, if you had a grenade sticker on your board, it didn't matter. Like, you were part of the crew. If, if Danny didn't have his crew or his posse with him, like he wouldn't have been on like his game. Like I'm sure the Olympics and that type of stuff must have been difficult for him because of just the environment that he was in. But he likes to have his posse. Yeah, the Olympics was a huge part of you know my career in snowboarding. It wasn't something I really had planned on. Then in 2001, I literally had like this crazy breakout year and won I think almost every Grand Prix. And, Tons of contests, I can't even remember, it was wild. And then which led right into the Olympic year of 2002 in Salt Lake City where, wow, it was a wild experience, man. To see that many people surrounding a half pipe was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Holy shit, was that an inverted cab 1080 with a melon grab? Things worked out the way they did and it turned out to be, I think, I think really, pretty cool for the sport because it just got so much more attention from the public eye and it got a lot more eyes on the sport. Actually Danny, JJ and I all messed up our first runs and didn't make it into the finals so then we pulled it off on our second qualification runs and then uh, you know that's what and then it's all uh, what happened there. Everyone you're seeing now doing it I think saw watched us that day as kids and we're like huh that looks cool. Oh, and then all of a sudden snowboarding is bigger than um, figure skating like which would be laughable 15 years ago, or 20 years ago to say, but then it was, and then you had a skater just up front, and it was, uh, that was rad. I, I remember I saw him a couple years ago at, at uh, a trade show, and he was manning his booth, but he was just still there doing it. And that to me, was, it was just really, it was like, fuck, you know, he's down period, like he's a lifer. You know, you don't see too many other, I don't know, skiers in that same hall that got two silver medals at the Olympics breaking their booth down. Yeah, the Olympic experience was was pretty surreal. You know, we had a really amazing team. You know, it wasn't about like, all right, who did the best? It was like, you know, all these nerves inside of you, but then to finally like, okay, I just, all I want to do is land a run. You know, I don't want to go home disappointed. And all four of us stomped our runs and it was like insane. We were just like looking like, holy crap. We didn't even know that we'd like swept the podium. A few hours later, they kind of told us, they're like, you made history. We're like, cool, history. And I guess it was 56 years earlier, the US had swept a podium, but it'd been that long. For me in snowboarding, things really didn't change too much because I was still just focused on, you know, filming with the grenade movies and just trying to get as many competitions as possible. For me, competition wise, it was like I had bigger goals set more for tricks and combos I wanted to learn. You know, at that time, back to back 1080s hadn't been done and it kind of left me with a little like fuel inside. Media-wise, I would say Olympics has definitely had some good and bad effects on snowboarding. In my eyes, the more people that are going to go out there and snowboard, the better it is. So for me, like after the Olympics, you know, I really started to focus a little bit more on like park riding and slope style and kind of backcountry and trying to find like a really good balance. And I did find that like switching and getting out of the half pipe and not just doing like a same run over and over again, that I just needed to do something completely different and get away from the half pipe to really kind of come back and fall in love with it again. Making the second US team was definitely one of the harder things that I, that I fought and battled for. Like the level of riding was so high. And, uh, and then I was, you know, I was watching Danny ride and photograph him and, I mean, to be honest, I was like, man, he's not, he's not even going to podium. 
it's not to say it wasn't at that level, but it just didn't appear that way to me, honestly. And I was like, oh, well, at least he got to come and, and everything, you know? I still had a lot of things that I wanted to accomplish <clears throat> in the half pipe as far as technical combinations go and runs. Once the contest started, they're like, Danny Cass dropping in, and it's like, boom! Like, huge, huge air to fake you the first first hit and I just remember being like oh shit next thing you know you know he's second on the podium and I was like oh it's like that when it was his time I mean he just he just went and did it but up until that time he just kind of cruised it and had fun and then when it was like okay this is my moment to do me I mean he really did it you know once the pressure was off getting to kind of ride and and just let it out in the half pipe was pretty incredible. Yeah, that's where that one went. There's really like nothing better than the rush you get from doing well in a competition, but there's also like nothing worse than feeling like you didn't really meet your own expectations within riding, you know, in a competition. So, you know, I think I really kind of took a step back from competition and really just started focusing on my riding. And really it kind of took filming with different crews and different people at that time and younger peers to really like find this love within snowboarding again and i stopped like riding with my friends because they were all grumpy and like bitter on snowboarding and like burnt out i was just like dude you guys are depressing so then i like started trying to do backside 1080s with eric jackson and these kids in mammoth park he had like this golden shovel man like anytime he pulled out his shovel and patted something down or like we built something it was like I was getting shots it was so fun. Bruce D kind of gave me the real confidence boost and was just like you think you can land backwards in that? Yeah! And I came flying through this landing backwards I was like when I land this five you just time lapse the damn glacier okay? 